Right. Good morning, folks. Hope everyone is uh, fine today. Um, <clears throat> very much unprecedented times for our island and the world at whole. Really, really puts this leadership program and this leadership course into a different perspective. Anyhow, um, today is your last class, basically, officially, with regards to leadership and organization as it pertains to the University of Hertfordshire Business Administration, Bachelor's in Business Administration in Bachelor's of Arts, your BABA program. So today, more or less, we would have completed or at the end of today, we would have run our course of 22 hours of interactions and more or less it ran pretty quickly for those of you who were counting the times. Um, nevertheless, um, um, I, I think it, it was pretty uh, quick uh, and I hope that it was enjoyable for you as well. So today we're going to just do a quick reflection on where we are with regards to leadership and organization and we then have a small section to go through the CW2 assignment. So I hope everybody is, is, is okay and up and about and got their coffee, something to drink and uh, not, not very long. It's only about um, eight or nine slides max to go through. So um, we'll just jump straight into it as, as other people join accordingly. Um, not much. All right, so seven of us are here. So we will, we will start and uh, just jump into it. So off the top, um, again, you know, always looking at what we can do with regards to leadership, uh, you know, and, and what's happening is great leaders encourage leadership development by openly developing themselves. And I, I think um, what we want to really get across with the concept of where we would have seen the various leaderships from where we started, you know, 20 hours ago, um, or the first lecture, we spoke about traits and behaviors and are great leaders born or are great leaders made. And again, one of the key factors here is encouraging leadership development giving people the chance to do certain things, giving people the chance to be what they can be, um, given the opportunity. You know, sometimes you say, oh, I was never given the opportunity. I was never do this or whatever have you. And that's why you weren't able to progress into something. Uh, and, and I think, you know, all leaders have to really look at that from that standpoint. To be able to progress, um, you really seriously need to, uh, look at how do we effect our charges? How do we ensure that we get the best out of them? And what does that leave you? I mean, how do you grow within your organization? So interesting concept in terms of us, you know, saying, hey, what's happening? When am I going to get the chance? Um, granted, if we want to put things into perspective, uh, when the, the, the present government came into power uh, five years ago, they had relatively young members of parliaments, a number of firsts, actually. And I mean, obviously, it is, for want of a better word, an opportunity there or an opportunity arise for the prime minister to encourage leadership development. Yes, there were some stumbling blocks and they probably still are. The Minister of Energy got an opportunity uh, and I, I still feel that, you know, um, she probably needed to get another opportunity, you know, to be able to step into that shoe itself. I mean, just going from, you know, basically being in a party group and, and then being elected a member of parliament and then being the, the Minister of Energy uh, it's quite a big set of jumps. So what, looking back in hindsight, could have been done and what happens? Now, the way the system works uh, or should work is that you go from local government, right, where you get the chance of 
actually being a counselor for an area, a much smaller area, and you go to a statutory meeting where this council meets and there's either a chairman or a mayor, and uh, <clears throat> you get a chance to run with that. And having get, gotten that exposure, <clears throat> you then have the ability, <clears throat> you then have the ability to say, hey, I can now take on wider charges. I've gotten my chance in a small council, a small group, a village council, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get into uh, a representative, a member of parliament, where your constituents now are a lot bigger. It's not just zoned by uh, a county or, or a village or whatever have you. So, so you get that opportunity. Now, granted, not everybody wants to move. And I think that's probably one of the challenges that you have is how do you recruit somebody for a member of parliament job? Uh, and eventually being possible that if you win the election, that member of parliament is automatically going to get a ministerial position. How do you go through those charges? How, what do you do as a, as a leader? and uh, to ensure that you get the people, you know, the right chance. Now, yes, members of parliament do get that opportunity. The majority of them, um, I would say close to 50% basically have some sort of a legal background training. So it allows them to be flexible with regards to laws, dealing with our legislation, dealing with all of those procedural aspects and so forth. But there are also quite a bit of them that doesn't come from that legal background. So how do they operate and how do they get a chance and how are they encouraged for leadership development? And again, it says by openly developing yourself, you know, that's what you're going to do to encourage. So we really need to look back at our leaders and realize who is allowing who to develop, what's really happening, what's going on and how it works. So we'll move on from the quote. Um, and we jump into what is called personality. And this is really interesting itself because your assignment has a bit of this to do. So it's probably ideal for us to look at this section. And what the definition is, personality is the set of unseen characteristics and processes that underlie a relatively stable pattern of behavior in response to ideas, objects or people in the environment. Interesting, eh? It's unseen characteristics and process that underlie a relatively stable pattern of behavior. So how does somebody typically respond? And this is where Shin's iceberg will come into play because we have had this situation where we only see part of what's really there, the visible, but there's also the invisible that probably connects with personality. So I, I think the challenge here is to understand this with regards to choosing your leader. And as we get to assignment two, uh, that's going to be the topic of discussion. So the second part of this, leaders who have an understanding of how individuals' personalities differ can use this understanding to improve their leadership effectiveness. And this comes back from Daft and Heller. So Heller basically had part of this and Daft uh, improved or added to the actual uh, definition. So you really need to understand your people that you are leading because you have to encourage them. You have to basically push them. And if you cannot convince them emotionally um, you know, to change or to go towards a particular goal, you're not going to be an effective leader. So it's an interesting concept here. There are two parts. One is your characteristics and processes that basically are the basis of your behavioral pattern and how you respond to ideas, objects, and people in the working environment. And you know, understanding people's personalities as well um, can, you can use this to improve your leadership effectiveness. So it's an interesting spin on it itself. So again, something to think about. Um, one of the key factors uh, that we would see is the personality ocean. And this is a, a, a name, an acronym for openness, conscious, co conscientiousness, 
uh, extroversion, agreeable, and necrotism. And all of these five areas are what puts you into how your personality is going to become across, how your personality is developed, and uh, what happens. So it's an interesting uh, um, concept. Uh, I did put an article, a PDF out there for you to look at. Um, so it, it's really interesting. So personality ocean plays a part. And these five areas are areas that actually pushes you and defines you in various situations, in terms of actions, in terms of responses to people, in terms of situations that you may be in. Okay, so in the new leadership scenario now, and what we would have learned, there is a new leadership. And what we are seeing or what Benis is seeing here, the leaders of the future will have to cast off the heavy burden of command and control, hierarchically based leadership. Now that has always been the case in terms of the person. It's sort of a triangular, you know, in scenario. And I mean, people now have a lot more flatter organizations. You know, sometimes you have so many assistants, it's ridiculous to determine who is the boss. And, and I think this is all about having a more flatter organization as the world involves. And one of these scenarios is that they are suggesting four aspects. So leaders will have to learn an entirely new set of skills four competencies they have actually categorized them into. The new leader understands and practices the power of appreciation. The new leader keeps reminding people of what is important. The new leader generates and sustains trust. The new leader and the led are innate allies. And, and, and this is interesting. How many of us don't get along with our bosses? <laughs> you know, we just basically, he's the boss and that's basically what it is, you know? but he's not really an ally. He's not really has your back. You don't really has his back, have his back. You, you take things with a pinch of salt. And I think that's the challenge that we have. Yes, going forward. Are all of these necessary though? I mean, that's the debate. I mean, again, um, the power of appreciation goes a long way. Telling people thank you, telling them appreciate the good job that you've done. Uh, highlighting, it comes back to Cutter. John Cutter tells us about that, you know, celebrating the small wins, you know, ensuring that it sticks and continuing doing that really makes a huge difference. So there's some merit in it. Um, reminding people of what is important. I think this has to come down and we've seen this throughout uh, the course is, is about communication and how important communication is uh, to let your staff know that they're part of the process. Many times in small organizations, we don't really get to find out when the organization is making a strategic change or direction. And what happens? You know, at the end of the day, you kind of say, oh, you throw up your hands and say, oh my goodness, what do I do? You know, um, uh, I'm not the boss, you know, this is their decision, this is what they've done. So again, um, whether it's a, it's a competence, I, I think it's more of a culture uh, that has to be adapted. And, and there's a slide on that very shortly. Um, so that's important. Leader generates and sustain trusts. And I think this is really, really important. I would agree with this statement. I think it definitely has to be a competence of new leaders coming into the whole place. Um, new leader and the led, your staff, are uh, intimate allies. Would you agree? Do we have to? Uh, I think there's some level of it. Um, whether we, 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 we go to the level to use a, a word as intimate, uh, there are many meanings to that, but I mean, should we actually get to that level? I, I think that, yes, we need to be allies. We need to trust from the statement above and we need to basically know each other. And it's not just a job. If it has just become a job, then the statement of people leave, don't leave bad jobs, they leave bad bosses comes into play. You know, so I think it's, it's important. Uh, so again, 
uh, these four competencies can be debatable if you go back and you look at some of the scenarios uh, that we would have covered in terms of motivation, in terms of empowerment, in terms of uh, engagement, employee engagement. Maybe it's, it's something that, 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 that has to be taught. Maybe it's something that new leaders really have to bring into the play. Um, part of our new leaders born or our new leaders made. Interesting concept. So one of the key factors, obviously, is the nature of the organization that we go into. And I guess the importance of it. So uh, this slide, uh, the way in which an organization is structured, the nature of processes and systems it adopts, the underlying cultural aspects of an organization, the way in which control, power, and conflicts manifest themselves, and the approaches taken to tackling organizational effectiveness all provide information from which you can make an assessment. And, and this is important because I think all of this then tells you what type of leader is required in that organization or what type of leadership is required in that organization. You have to look at all of these things. And likewise, when you are looking for a job, a new job, or you're going into a job, the nature of the organization, that organization culture, that organizational behavior is important. You know, in terms of how you make your assessment to determine, yes, this is achieved by critically evaluating the three styles against each other for the long-term effectiveness against other styles of leadership and for their impact on employee motivation and the culture of the organization. So, I mean, people wanting to come to work to your organization, you know, because it's a good place to work, it's whatever, probably may not have the highest paid salary, but it's a good working environment the intangible benefits, the ability to, de to develop in that company is much better than going into another company where I'm just getting money and it's very much difficult to work with. So it's an interesting concept from that standpoint. So something to think about, okay? And well, obviously the last uh, slide I have here, the styles of leadership used should only be drawn from those studied on the module listed above, which I gave you in a PDF, right? Style is used in the broadest sense, which means it includes both styles or behaviors from various approaches, behavioral influence and relational. You would need examples from two other business leaders who have deployed styles of leadership other than the lead leader, sorry, one discussed above, to enable you to compare and contrast their effect on business performance, employee motivation, organizational culture. Also, uh, note also the time factor, long term versus short to medium term. So I, again, very interesting scenario. Um, you know, some organization are really set up and will bring in a leader because they're trying to turn around. So they're turning around the organization uh, so maybe it has to be very authoritative. You're not getting the chance to really be democratic or laser fair and let people do their own. I need to set people on a course. Uh, that's important. Uh, that's interesting for us to think about as well. So that time factor is hugely important. So I gave you an example of a assignment that talked about transformational uh, leadership. So uh, you can use that as a guideline um, to help you go down that particular part. So I'll just um, hold on if anybody has any particular uh, questions that they may want to ask. Uh, is it clear in your head now what you are looking to accomplish? Uh, pretty easy itself. I mean, you're, you're literally choosing uh, three styles, one that is for the long term showing employee engagement and then two other styles that are not as engaging for the long term, uh, not as uh, motivating for the long term. Uh, so you must show those three styles in the assignment, which obviously will then be related or inferred about a particular leader. Any questions, anybody? No, no questions. Everybody's Q fine. 
Um, I will drop my video. Um, <coughs> Right, so um, no questions. Everybody's Q fine. Oh, I have a chat there. Sorry, I'm not seeing it. Sorry. Right. So the question: uh, Do the leaders who we are comparing have to come from the same industry sector? Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, interesting question. Um, remember, it's the style. And you're looking for long term and you're trying to justify in the assignment that your style that you have chosen is, well, regardless of industry, is basically uh, better than the other styles. So if you're choosing somebody from a retail or somebody from oil and gas or somebody from technology, it doesn't matter. I mean, I guess you're just looking for... Uh, has that company performance has been, how the employee engagement has been, how the employee motivation has been. And once it's there, I don't think you're going to have a challenge um, with regards to what industry or sector it comes from. Hope I answered your question there. Right, anybody else? Um, any other questions that you may want to ask? I mean, in regards to the assignment? So again, must have three different styles listed in the assignment. That's a key factor to ensure that you get the marking, you get the most of the marking. Um, right, they said not to use company websites. Can other credible websites be used as a source? Um, I think if you're referencing them and putting the date and time when you reference as well, which is part of Harvard referencing, um, that should be okay itself. Uh, I need to go back and confirm that uh, where they said do not use company websites um, just to make sure that we are on the same page. So, but don't see a, a, a big issue. Um, once you have credible websites reporting something, uh, it's there and it can be accessed and it's, it's not a bogus site. Um, sure, I, I see no big issue in it. Um, one of the challenges you would come up to uh, to negate this here, Sheldon, is... Um, in your abstract, or, and I would suggest you probably do an abstract to justify or see where you are because you, you only have 1,500 words. So I think the challenge is to basically paint the picture of the story that you're going to, you're going to write. And um, if you are basically challenged with websites, um, you can lay out certain things in the abstract that helps deflect it from that standpoint. So you, you, you should be okay. But again, uh, once you have a, a credible website, I don't see a, a big issue on it. Right, so um, Ariella understood my answer. Great, thank you. Uh, with regarding to industry. Um, anyone else again in terms of questions again? Um, I hope you all uh, looked at it from the reflective standpoint that we looked at. The PDF that I sent you is really clear to show you the styles, to show, to show you the traits, the behavioral traits, et cetera, et cetera. And I think if you do that, that's going to be fantastic. I'm just quickly checking to see um, what has happened with regards to your CW1 and where the... Um, marking is going in that so I can just give you a quick update so one second as that comes up All right, so we have about 21 um, uh, of CW1 has been marked, right? So um, it's... Just checking... Um, to see if anybody failed 
So no one has failed. My highest mark has been 87, right? And the lowest was 40. So um, again, uh, there, there were some challenges with regards to uh, uh, the questions. <laughs> didn't, didn't appreciate the questions because um, I sent you guys some, some sample questions and I don't know, English language needs to be clarified. So uh, I'm hoping that you all were happy to see the paper. Um, it would have been a, quite a bit of similarity. So anyhow, uh, questions, um, Bridget? Right, so yes, we are confirming 1500. I did not get the change to 2000, uh, but he did speak about the abstract. So, you know, you have a 500 words in the abstract that you can put in that's going to help uh, paint your story or, you know, be the appetizer for your assignment. So, yep, uh, definitely that's, that's where that is. Um, so, pretty much okay. Um, let me just see. I saw um, a mark. Just checking to see if that person is online. Nope, they're not. All right, so. Let me just check back with the marks here. Wow. And amazingly, most of you that are online right now, your paper is not marked. <laughs> How convenient is that? Okay, nevertheless, uh, we'll get there. Right, so uh, any other questions there uh, from anybody else? Um, nope, you all are all okay and happy. Yeah, so today was just really a quick reflection that uh, he wanted to uh, bring forth um, the uh, personality aspect of things. Um, really, you know, the the big the big part here or the the learning part of today's reflection was that personality ocean, which is the five broad uh, dimensions commonly used um, to research and study personality. So the openness, the consciousness, the extravision, the um, agreeableness, and the necrotism. Uh, this is all the five areas that um, has been used to measure, develop, and better understanding of individual differences in personality. So that's something you may want to look at, um, which is the personality ocean. Um, other than that, um, you know, uh, in terms of a new topic, uh, there's nothing really major itself. Um, <clears throat> uh, somebody's asking about a mark, one second. I'm just gonna check quickly. Um, Right, so, uh, you know, on that, on that note, um, I'm asking any of you, again, any, anyone has any major challenge? Nope. Oh, everybody is okay. All right, so, um, oh, one more question again here. Once we send our assignments review, can you advise the time frame for receiving feedback? Um, I, I try to do the feedback on the same day um, so that if you can actually put a telephone number it would be really, really easy because then I can just call you uh, or you can put the telephone number and time if you're submitting an assignment for review so that I can call you and just kind of uh, go through it very quickly. Um, to email a response sometimes is a little bit of a, a challenge uh, because I have to clip the, uh, your assignment and you know, tell you which paragraph, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I tend to do it on the same day that you send it. So if you can send it, uh, I, I will action accordingly. 
right. Um, so again, I would like to personally um, congratulate each one of you. Um, I'm hoping that my class wasn't as difficult as it seemed when it started. Uh, we are literally 21 hours of face-to-face, of -face. well, except in the last two or three classes. I mean, I, you saw me, I don't know, I didn't see all of you. But um, uh, definitely our interactions uh, in the last 21 hours, I hope you would have seen leadership and organization from a different perspective and how it played a part in your own development uh, as you work towards your degree uh, to become the, our next uh, big entrepreneur, uh, major CEO, CEO, you know, managing director, you know, where you are. So I really, you know, want to applaud you for attending your classes, uh, completing your first assignment, going into the second assignment. I know it's going to be successful for you guys. Uh, I think you have what it takes. Um, you know, congratulations. Uh, I, I salute you all uh, because, you know, it's not an easy task to be doing something part-time, working and having a life. So uh, this is fantastic. Um, uh, we're grateful for this technology as well so that we can actually continue uh, to support you and interface with you. So uh, I do wish you all the best uh, in your future endeavors and I'm sure I'm going to be crossing paths with some of you uh, for the next semester uh, when we actually start up your next class, which is going to be, uh, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to be teaching digital economy. So uh, I do wish that... Um, uh, you the very much success that you are seeking and I know that you have put your foot forward your best foot forward and nothing is going to fall short in that aspect okay so uh, definitely um, please keep it up uh, you will always have stumbling blocks in front of you you need to keep your eyes open focus uh, this degree is definitely going to open your eyes up to a lot of things, a lot of things that will probably be stumbling blocks that you can use as stepping stones to your next uh, conquering event or your next conquering uh, task that is in front of you. So congratulations to all of you all for definitely uh, reaching uh, to this pinnacle, uh, completing this course. I mean, you know, you have eight modules to complete, uh, but again, um, Hats off to you guys. I'm, I'm always amazed of um, people studying part-time. Uh, I am telling you, I did not have the opportunity to do that. And, um, you know, uh, even at a full-time state, I struggled. So I cannot imagine what you guys go through. And I certainly cannot be in your shoes. So for that, I really want to encourage you guys that, I mean, even at, at my last degree, I did, I actually had time off to do it. So um, again, like I said, um, my, my second master's, I had time off. I mean, my first master, I had time off. You know, my, my degrees, I had time off. My diplomas, I had time off. So I, I cannot... I cannot fathom what you are doing. I cannot, I just can't comprehend it. It's, it's ridiculous, but uh, it's amazing to see your results. It's amazing to see um, the marks that are coming in. Like, as I said, CW1 has started to mark and there are no failures. They're fantastic. The highest mark I've seen so far is 86. Uh, so phew, hats off to you guys. Good job. Keep it up. And if you need anything, please uh, reach out to Jude or copy myself. Uh, we are there to support you. CTS has really been a star uh, among um, all the roses out here um, in terms of de de delivering tertiary education. Uh, they definitely have their students at heart. And um, I, I'll try my best to ensure that I, I, I live to that motto as well and that particular trait that CTS has. So if you need anything, feel free to reach out. I do believe that they have numbers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you need to call, it's not, you all have emails from me. Uh, my cell phone is in, the, in that email. So if you need anything, feel free as well um, to give me a shout. Um, again, if afterwards you need something and you need to bong something off, uh, feel free as well. I, you know, would gladly love to help you guys uh, continue on your journey, okay? Because it's nothing but success for you guys. So take care. Have a good one. God bless. Be safe. This is the, those of you celebrating Easter, happy Easter. Um, you know, it's a glorious Saturday. Um, we celebrated Good Friday yesterday, Holy Tuesday. 
on Tuesday. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow, Easter Sunday. So uh, happy Easter to all of you. Um, again, keep safe, keep the hygiene up. Um, you know, don't forget to wear your mask going out. And um, again, I'm sure we're going to cross paths and we're going to see each other. So do be safe, people. And uh, all the best. God's richest blessings to each and every one of you. And hats off again for your commitment, your dedication towards your uh, higher education that you're seeking. Really, really hats off to you guys. So uh, there you have it, folks. Uh, lecture 11. And again, I'll just uh, stick around. Anybody has any questions? I'm just checking the chat. Okay, yes, you're most welcome, folks. I'm glad that I can be part of your journey and I'm hoping that I, I contributed towards it. So, uh, again, I will check and see what's happening. Uh, Nikisha, I would look at your assignment, uh, what's actually happening there as well. Okay, good. All right, so thanks again, folks. Um, uh, short class. I, I'm not sure if you have classes uh, with Nigel and Arnold after, but um, you certainly have some time in between uh, their classes because uh, this lecture was just uh, simply uh, one new topic and they go over for assignment two. So all the best, take care and talk to you guys.